Right, so now that we can actually send messages to our server, what we're now going to do is look at actually uh, retrieving these. First of all, when you first land on this chat, and second of all, when you actually send a message. Now, we've already got plenty of test data inside of our um, database, so we can test with this coming through. Now, the way this is going to work is when you hit the page, or when a client rather hits a page like this, it's going to, obviously, we inside of our code uh, here, we know that when a client connects, we do certain things. So wait for input, or blah, blah, blah. What we're going to do is emit all messages. So when a client first connects, we're going to, you know, basically retrieve all of the all of the messages in our database, obviously with some kind of limit in place. And then what we're going to do is send them to that specific um, socket. So i.e. I'm just a client connecting and, you know, I want to go ahead and, you know, just re just retrieve all the messages. What What's then going to happen, which is slightly more confusing, I guess, is when I, as a as a user, type in a message like this, what I'm not going to do is I'm not going to, when I hit enter, I'm not going to go ahead and retrieve all of the messages back again. What's going to happen is my request is then going to force that on all clients that are open. So let's say 100 people had this chat window open and I typed hello. When I type hello, their socket or their client essentially or them, they are going to be listening for any input. So it's basically, well, not really, but when we send a message, it's going to emit to everyone. So when I type in hello, it emits to all people that are on the chat. It doesn't re-emit all of the messages. It just does the one that I typed in. So let's take, just take a look at how this works. So to emit all messages from the server, um, we're going to use our collection, so call. And we're going to go ahead and use the find uh, method. So exactly what we've done within our database here when we use the find method like this. So the collection is going to, well, we're going to find everything. What we're then going to do is limit it. So we'd say dot limit, and we're going to limit it by 100, uh, 100. You know, you can choose whatever you want. It doesn't really matter. What we're then going to do is sort this. And we're going to sort this by ID. And we're going to sort this in the order, in the opposite order that we would expect. So we're going to do this in the sort of last first if you like so um, what the reason we're doing that is because when we get these through in JavaScript we want to then uh, apply them to the messages section but we don't want to have to reverse them in JavaScript so we sort them in this order here and then we reverse them or we reverse them here rather and then we sort them with uh, output them with JavaScript so this all makes sense a bit later so what we're then going to do is say to array which is quite important and then we're going to have a callback here and this is going to obviously have an error and a result now if there is an error we want to throw an error you could obviously handle this more grace gracefully and perhaps maybe send a message to clients but you don't have to do this so now I'm going to say socket.emit now remember when we say socket.emit this only emits to the one person that's connecting this won't re-emit to everyone so if we were to do this differently uh, which we're going to do in a moment this would emit to everyone we don't want every time a new person connects everyone to get the output again so we're going to call this output remember this is a defined name and we're just going to pass the results as an array what we're then going to do is modify our index.html to listen for output. So when we listen for output, we basically just create another on method or a, a sort of a listener. So we say socket.on output. We have our function and we have the data that's returned. So for now, what I'm going to do is just console log this data. So what this means is that when I now refresh, oh, sorry, we need to obviously restart our server again. Let's just go ahead and pull this over. Oops, okay, so we've got a little error here. Um, let's just check where we've gone wrong. Ah, yes, of course, we, uh, we define that as an object, so this is not a comma at all. This is a little object, so it's a property. So this is the property that we want to sort by. And if we go and just restart this, 
Okay, perfect. So um, now what's going to happen is when I refresh, you'll see that what this does is it returns an array of objects, and these contain all of the messages from the server. So this is actually now sent all the data from the server that we need. So we've done it, but you know all we need to really do now is actually list through it and output it here. Now, the other thing that we need to do is when we actually send a message, we want this to automatically output as well. So we want to, down here, actually output this data as well. So this will output to all clients instead. So um, let's just go ahead and say, emit latest message to all clients. So what this will do is, instead of using socket.emit, We'll use client.emit, which will emit it to, say, there's 100 people. This will emit the latest message that's inserted, maybe by me, to everyone. So output and data. And we're supplying this within an array like this um, just because, you know, the data that's come through um, is an object and we want to have this as an array. So now we can test that also when I refresh. Let's just go ahead and duplicate this tab and open it in a new window. So I'm going to connect from here and I'm going to connect from here. So what that's done is it has, it has outputted, let's go open our console, it's outputted an array of seven objects on both clients. Now, as a, I'll just pull these over a little bit. As a user, what I'm now going to do is I'm going to say, Alex, um, new message or something. Hit enter. Oops, we need to restart our blooming server. There we go. So I'm going to say new message. Hit enter. Now you can see on both windows, that's emitted this message to both clients. And you can see that that's the latest message, new message, a new message. So the functionality to loop through all of these objects within this array and all of these and all of these objects in the array is going to be exactly the same. It's just going to output them here. So let's go ahead and do that now. So all we need to do now is the sort of back end side of it, if you like, is done where it passes us the messages. We now just want to list through and output these messages in here, which is uh, you know just a case of of listing through and outputting things. So I'm going to say socket dot on output, whether that's output when we initially connect or output when we, you know, get a new message posted by any of the hundred or thousand people. Um, we want to go ahead and actually loop through this data. So the first thing we want to do is make sure that there is actually data available because this is an array. We have access to the length property and um, we're now going to go ahead and loop through results. Remember whether that be that single one or all of the results on connection. So we create a for loop and we create a counter in here. We're going to say while x is less than data.length, like that, and we're going to say x equals x plus 1. So now we are looping through the count of the messages. So what we want to do is create an element, which is a div element, which is going to sit within here, remember we created these uh, earlier in the series when we styled them up. So what we want to do is we want to say var message equals document dot create element, and we want to choose the tag which is a div. So what we now want to do is set an attribute for this. Remember we have an attribute of chat message. So set attribute class to chat message so that will now apply that margin bottom we then want to go ahead and set the text content for this so we want that to be now this is a little bit more complicated but it's going to look like this alex message so we need the name here and the message here now remember the data contains if we look in one of the clients that we had open the data so within this object contains the message and the name so it's just property message and property name so in here, what we want to do is just, well, well, let's get rid of this. We'll say data, so the data that's passed back. X, remember we've got our counter here, so it's zero index, so the first message basically. Um, and then we want to say dot name. And then we want to concatenate on a colon. And then we want to concatenate on data x dot message. And that's it, that's all we need to do. We've got our name and our message in here. 
Um, all we need to do now is we'll just space this out a little bit. We want to append this to uh, the, um, or append, sorry. So we want to say messages, which is remember the main container, which we selected. Oh, we haven't done that yet. So messages equals get node chat messages. So plural. Um, so messages dot append child and we're going to append the element that we've just created message then what we want to do is we want to insert this before the last um, message so we're just sort of doing it in reverse order so we say messages dot insert before message messages dot first child and that will basically just mean that the last message that's posted is at the very top so let's go ahead and just um, grab two of our windows open and refresh one. And there we go. So we'll refresh the other one. And there we go. So this is, this is the latest message. And remember, we've already seen this functionality work because we've already posted a message and seen the console log. But now if I was to type in, say, I don't know, Dale and Ashley, Ashley, and Dale was to say, hello there, that then works in... Uh, is passed to both clients as we've already seen in the console but now actually outputs it and then Ashley could say hi and that just works exactly the same way around so what we've done is we've obviously created our you know our styled element we've connected using socket IO using web sockets um, and we know that we're using web sockets because if we check let's see in our network tab and let's filter this by uh, WebSockets. We can see that we've got a WebSocket here, um, you know, in connection. Um, we know that we're connecting via WebSockets. We've got a styled element. We've got the ability to type in a message, a name that be sent through to Node.js. We've got our server set up here. It validates, it sends messages back to the client, whether or not it's a success or not. Um, and basically, all of this put together creates our working chat that we have here so we can now have you know however many clients that you know node.js will be able to handle open and chatting away 